There's a Wisconsin Republican, Peter Schmidt, who appears to be a lock for a seat in the state assembly in November's elections, but he's downplaying his past same-sex flings in an effort to stay on the good side of conservative Christian voters. He really doesn't want people to know he's gay. And he definitely doesn't want anyone showing you proof that he himself has had several encounters with at least one other dude. So he's really not gonna like this video. And here's the thing. I'm not outing him. I would never out someone. He outed himself. I just happen to have the proof. Here's why this matters. In August, Schmidt won a six-way primary by a mere 63 votes to become the Republican nominee for the reliably red District 6 seat. But his nomination means more people are sifting through his past. And that's troubling for him for two key reasons, both of which happened around the same time period a few years ago. The first big problem, which most people in his community know about, came in November of 2019, when Schmidt, who was a Shawano County board member at the time, was accused of strangling a staffer at his family's farm. According to an incident report filed with the local sheriff's office that I got my hands on, more on that in a moment, on November 22nd of that year, Two employees who lived on the farm told an officer they had overslept for an early, early morning shift. Schmidt allegedly barged into the residence, yelled at them, then grew even angrier when they weren't ready 15 minutes later. At that point, the employees said they weren't going to work. They weren't going to put up with that kind of treatment. And that set Schmidt off. Here's what a part of that incident report says. Peter then held the victim down onto the bed, pressing downward around the base of the victim's neck, causing him pain without his permission. The victim was having difficulty breathing and started losing consciousness and did not fight back because he was afraid of him and that he may do something worse if he fought back. The victim's colleague recorded this interaction with his phone. The video depicts Peter holding the victim down by the throat to where the bed sinks. That sounds horrible. Schmidt later told the officer he held the victim in place by his neck, but didn't choke him out. Either way, he was arrested and later charged with disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor, and strangulation and suffocation, a felony. Peter Schmidt is charged with a felony count of strangulation and suffocation for an alleged incident in November. Nina, we talked on the phone tonight with the chair of the Shawano County Board, and he said Schmidt will not be removed. However, the chair also said Schmidt is not running for re-election. His term ends in three months, and he has been asked to no longer serve on the Public Safety Committee. He was eventually sentenced to two years of probation, had to take anger management classes, underwent a psychological assessment, and was ordered to write an apology letter to the victim. You would think a guy like that would not attempt to run for public office. And yet, here we are. And basically, uh, he's a convicted criminal. Uh, he was charged uh, at one level and it was plea bargained down to a misdemeanor. This was all known at the time Peter Schmidt entered the Wisconsin Assembly race. In fact, the local GOP chair told the website wispolitics.com that Schmidt had been censured due to the criminal conviction, a move that prevents him from attending local Republican events or displaying campaign materials at their headquarters. The chair also urged Schmidt to drop out of the state assembly race, but those pleas went ignored. Now, WisPolitics notes, the Shawano GOP says it won't support Schmidt's campaign because members believe criminals do not reflect the values of the party. And I know, the irony of Republicans saying criminals don't reflect their values should not be lost on anyone. But here's the obvious question. 
If the Republicans really don't want this guy representing them, why didn't they say all this publicly before the primary? We didn't take action before because, to be honest with you, we did not believe he was going to win, Shawano GOP Chair Richard Cuxdorf said, referring to Schmidt. They didn't think he was going to win, so they didn't make a big fuss over the criminal history, and then he won. Funny how that works. The censuring is hardly a punishment too, because there's very little chance any Republican will lose a race in this particular district. So all these claims that Republicans are really bothered by this man's history, it's just all for show. They don't care. They will absolutely vote for him and encourage their base to vote for him. Not a single Republican leader has said people should vote for the Democrat in the race. All of that, however, pales in comparison to the second story about Schmidt, the one that has been far less publicized. About a month after he assaulted one of his employees on December 31st, 2019, Schmidt visited the local sheriff's office to make a complaint of his own. Someone was trying to blackmail him. The unknown suspect, he said, was demanding $50,000 in exchange for not releasing a sex tape of Schmidt performing oral sex on another male. I will admit, this all seemed very far-fetched when I first heard about it. There was only one article about this story, and the only source in it was a paywalled article with no links in it. Doesn't mean it's wrong, just means we shouldn't take it at face value. But I wanted to know how accurate these stories were, so I called the local sheriff's office, explaining that I'm a writer digging into this story, and I wanted all the public records involved in these incidents. I followed that up with an email, making a more formal request, and to my surprise, it didn't take long before I got my hands on both incident reports, with names and details and everything. I was able to confirm this story. And this second incident report is a doozy. According to this report, Schmidt admitted the recording was real. He said he had been in a relationship with another man who worked on the Schmidt Ponderosa farm, and that the tape in question depicted one of their, and I am quoting here, many hookups. Peter Schmidt stated that this act happened while no one else was around. They were alone. This was a free and voluntary sexual act between the two of them. There had been many sexual encounters between Peter Schmidt and his partner. However, there was only one shown in the recording. Schmidt didn't know he was being recorded, but apparently he was. And that footage was sent to someone and that someone contacted him on WhatsApp using an untraceable number from Mexico and said he would send the tape to Schmidt's father and brother unless he received $50,000. And just to make the threat more believable, the caller included the actual phone numbers of Schmidt's father and brother in the message, as if to suggest he wasn't joking. The incident report said Schmidt negotiated the price down to $5,000 over the course of a couple days, but never actually paid it. According to the report, he then told his family of his lifestyle choice, homosexuality. Basically, he came clean to his family and the guy making the threat no longer had any leverage to use against him. As far as we know, that guy disappeared after that. The case was closed just days later with no further action by law enforcement because there just didn't seem to be any way to figure out where the messages were coming from. Now, let me make this very clear. All of that is awful. Schmidt's consensual sexual acts are no one else's business. For someone to use a private sex tape of an act that at least one of the guys didn't even know was being filmed as a weapon of extortion is horrific, if not criminal. Honestly, I felt dirty reading through the incident report, and I don't even like this guy. But here's why we should not just ignore this, and why I feel justified talking about this. Schmidt is running for office as a Republican, a party that is hell-bent 
on blocking civil rights for LGBTQ people and openly pushing policies that make their lives worse. They spread harmful lies about LGBTQ people all the time. This may not be Ted Haggard level hypocrisy because Schmidt isn't a powerful figure yet, but it's in the ballpark. It doesn't help that when Politics contacted Schmidt for comment about this incident, he insisted he was no longer gay while playing up his conservative Christian resume. I was the victim of a crime, but I've put the matter behind me, and I've focused on my faith," Schmidt said in a statement to Wispolitics.com. I'm a strong conservative and Christian, but there was a brief moment I struggled with my sexuality. No one should be persecuted or smeared for their personal orientation. Uh-huh. Sure. It's hard to understand how he struggled with his sexuality for a brief moment, when he himself admitted to many sexual encounters with that other man over the course of an entire year, and told his family about his lifestyle. And that's just assuming he only ever fooled around with this one guy. And it's not like this is ancient history. It happened literally a few summers ago when Schmidt was approximately 27, not at some church camp when he was in high school. But he is right that no one should be persecuted or smeared over their sexual orientation. So why the hell is he a member of a party that routinely persecutes and smears people over their sexual orientation? It's not like Schmidt supports LGBTQ rights, but holds conservative views on everything else. And I know that for a fact, too. In a questionnaire he filled out for the political arm of the conservative Christian group Alliance Defending Freedom, Schmidt said he supports the right of business owners to refuse to work with LGBTQ customers who want to pay them money to receive the same services offered to straight people. He also opposes transgender girls competing in women's sports. He also wants parents to be able to obtain professional counseling for their trans kids so that the parents can reach their desired outcomes. He also opposes adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the list of protected classes in the state's non-discrimination laws. Peter Schmidt who said no one should be persecuted for being gay, would use his political power to persecute gay people, all in the name of Jesus. He'd go after women too, by the way. He proudly proclaims he is 100% pro-life with no exceptions, meaning he would gladly sacrifice a pregnant person's life to save a fetus. This is someone who should not be in power. But unless something seriously dramatic happens, he very well will be in a few months. The least we can do is show everyone what he does in private because it completely contradicts what he says he'll do in public. And it's not just internal hypocrisy. He wants to punish other people for doing things he does himself. Or at least he did. On tape. For what it's worth, I reached out to Schmidt for comment weeks ago to hear what he had to say about all this. It won't surprise you to learn I have not heard back. 